Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chen Chu. I'm the resident of urology department of Taipei Veterans General Hospital in Taiwan. Today, I would like to represent my research of the risk factors of hyponatremia in the desmopressin replacement of elderly patients with nocturnal polyuria. As we know, nocturia is one bothersome symptom. The treatment is complicated due to multiple comorbidities and etiology. Hyponatremia is a major concern during the desmopressin supplement, especially in the elderly patients. Um, Therefore, we investigate the risk factors and the inc incidence of hyponatremia after treatment. From January 2018 to May gen uh, 2019 in our institute, those patients who meet the criteria of nocturnal polyuria were recruited in this retrospective study. We excluded patients below the age of 65, serum sodium level below 130, impaired renal function, liver cirrhosis, heart failure, and using diuretics. In addition, each patient recorded 24 hours voiding diaries for three days. Nocturnal polyurea index, the cutoff value was set at 0.33. Desmopressin 0.1 milligram was given orally to all patients before going to bed at night in the first month, before treatment and after a monthly after treatment, mean number of nocturnal voids, questionnaire of adverse event were recorded. A total of 64 patients, 57 male patients and seven female patients were enrolled in our study. Incidence of hyponatremia was 37.5%. Thir Those adjustment for hyponatremia we had one patient tapered to a quarter tablet per night after two months treatment. 10 patients tapered to a half tablet per night after one month treatment. And um, two patients who had sleep apnea titrated to one and a half tablets after three months treatment. From morning diary, desmopressin could reduce the number of nocturic voids per night. NP index and extended first uninterrupted sleep period. Um, significant risk factors of hyponatremia were age, baseline sodium level, kidney function, and men with low testosterone. Um, we had uh, eight patients with severe hyponatremia. They had symptoms with mild nausea, headliness, abdominal pain, general malaise, and skin itching. My conclusions as below. Testosterone, um, sorry, desmopressin supplements significantly reduced the number of nocturial voids per night and the MP index. Des desmopressin supplement significantly e extended first uninterrupted sleep period. Significant, significant risk factors of hyponatremia were age, baseline sodium level, kidney function, and men with low testosterone. And thank you for attention. Are there questions or, or comments? Thank you, very interesting. Can you tell me what you did to the patients who had severe hyponatremia? You had a patient with a sodium of 118, for instance, and some up to 134. So what was the management of those patients? Um, first, this patient, uh, we collect the data after he back to our uh, clinic and we will titrate or um, will decrease the, the tablets to half uh, tablets. Super, so they continued on treatment? Yes. It's a Iqbal, the, let me just ask you a question because I'm always fascinated by the answers that I get. So if you have somebody and you're checking the serum sodium like you're supposed to, and after a week they turn up with the sodium of 130 to 134, and second instance, 126 to 129. I mean, what's, what's the advice that is suggested to give to these patients? Because I've never gotten an entirely consistent answer from 
from anyone. Well, Alan, very good question. And I think one of the reasons you didn't get a consistent answer is maybe because the question is not answerable in the sense that, as you and I know as clinicians, it's not really the numbers, it's the patient. Clearly, a patient with a sodium of 130 with no symptoms may need to be managed differently than a person with a sodium of 135 who's having episodes of dizziness and collapse and so on. So I think you have to evaluate the entire patient and we, uh, of course, in the label for desmopressin, there are things that you would do, not just based on numbers, but also on symptoms. Yes. Christian Juhl. Hey. So did you look at the timing of these hyponatremia episodes? Because typically we see the, the episodes in, in the early treatment phase within the first week or first month. So how, do, how, how did the timing look of these episodes? Um, pardon, please. Um, do you, I'm not for sure that the time, so can you... Uh, did, it, did the episodes happen early on in the treatment just after initiation, or did it happen later? I mean, how, how long did you follow up these patients? Actually, this patient still follow up in our clinic, but uh, we just collect uh, three months um, after the treatments um, and uh, find this phenomenon. Okay. Can, can you, meanwhile, he's, can, can you show the slide where you had the number of patients according to the age, and can you go a couple of slides back where you had? Yeah. Okay, okay. so microphone one first. So uh, I'm Dr. Jung from uh, Seoul, Korea. So thank you for a uh, nice presentation. So uh, this is the, the rectus, sorry retrospective observational studies. So uh, you uh, the measure the uh, serum, uh, the uh, sodium the in one month yes. after the initiation, uh, after medication. So, mm -hmm. but uh, most guidelines recommended the measurement of serum sodium after, uh, within uh, one week after medica medication. So uh, do you, uh, in your practice, you check the from uh, sodium the after one month, right? Uh, yes, just one month. Um, sorry. Yes, we just uh, check the point at the one month, and uh, the second month and the third month. Okay, thank you for your work and thanks for the discussion.